guys, today is step two of our two-part vlog. If you wanna see the cut from today's color that we're gonna do, then go check out the previous one, 107. I'll link it below, um, but let's get started. So today, what we're gonna go over is a color technique. Joyco sent me some really cool colors. So it is the LumaShine uh, color from Joyco. So I decided to try that out, tried out some different shades. We pre-lighten the mannequin. We create kind of a, a shadow um, root with lighter ends. So I think this technique's gonna be very useful for you guys in the salon. I know everybody likes seeing really fancy fantasy colors, but this is salon reality, and I really like putting out those kind of videos. So I hope you guys like it. Hope you find this technique useful. Let's get started with our step-by-step. -step. Here we go. So prior to the coloring technique, we need to pre-lighten our guest. So we're starting out at a level five. I wanna lift them up to an eight, nine level. So I'm using Joyco Free Play. This is a clay lightener. Uh, it's a clay-based lightener used for balayage. So I'm using one scoop of that, which is basically one ounce, to one and a half ounces of developer. That's the consistency I like. You could do one to one, one to two, however you want to uh, mix it. And then I added Olaplex to it just to help. Obviously this is a mannequin. I don't really care about uh, the damage of this person, <laughs> but um, somebody with more of an opinion I would care more about. So I would add Olaplex to it just as a bond builder. When you're using 40 volume, it's always good to have that extra added insurance in your color. So this is the balayage lightener. What I'm doing is basically going almost scalp to ends. I feather it to the scalp and then I pull it through to the ends. I get thicker and thicker with the application as I get towards the ends. What that's gonna do is give me a more natural feel to the hair color. So you'll notice it feathers off. I start at the mid shaft, uh, painting everything on, and then I spread it up to the base and then I get more lightener on my brush and I paint it through the ends to really soak it through. The key thing with balayage lightener, guys, is that you the more product you use, the better the result. Because if you just paint it on there very lightly because you're afraid of bleeding or uh, something like that effect, then um, you're not gonna get the result, you're gonna get a spotty result. What you wanna do, the, the reason that a clay-based lightener works so well is it's got a different consistency, so you wanna smooth it over the hair. It stays wet longer, so that allows the product to work longer, and also, it kind of incubates the hair as it's lightening. So instead of using a foil, which is where we would really pack it in to get that heat, um, you use the balayage lightener in that way to incubate the hair and really seal it and allow the light uh, the lightning process to work. So I worked my way all the way through the head shape, uh, through the head shape, that's more of a cutting term, but uh, I work my way through the head and I'm just painting this lightener on exactly the same throughout the whole thing. I don't wanna, that's why I sped it up so quickly for you guys. Just key things, again, make sure that you feather it towards the scalp. Don't go all the way to the scalp. We're gonna create a more natural uh, rooted look anyways with this technique. So I didn't need to go to the scalp. I also left the short disconnection that we cut in the haircut portion uh, on our last vlog. I left that out because I'm just gonna color that with a deeper color as well. So working my way through. Small sections is also key. Um, just making sure that your, your section is not quite see-through. I like to do about an inch to a, to a half inch section um, and then pull that down and then I paint heavily over top. So it gives a little shadowing underneath. You're not painting the product all the way through right at the scalp. But then once I work it through the ends, I'm working it on both sides of the hair. So um, it just kind of lays on the top towards the scalp so you don't get that bleeding. And then you paint it through to the ends uh, nice and heavy. So we're finishing up our last little bit. Um, again, keeping the consistency, uh, feathering the color. I think the biggest challenge I see when people do this, this type of technique is that they just don't use enough product. So make sure that you're using the product uh, thoroughly throughout the technique and you'll be good to go. So as we move up into the crown area, this is a very important area, but it's just important to make sure that you get that saturation um, and the consistency with the painting. Because obviously, when somebody's standing behind your guest, that's what they're gonna be looking at, is how uh, seamless that color is. So just make sure you really saturate it on there, stay really focused on how you're painting it towards the scalp, and uh, you'll be fine. 
So another thing you can look at, look at the way that I'm holding the brush. I don't hold the brush flat against the hair. It's kind of at a diagonal. Um, what that's gonna do is just give me softer lines once you start painting onto the hair. So instead of going horizontally straight at the hair and creating really hard lines with the uh, lightener placement, you go in at an angle, you lightly feather at the base, and you get a, a softer, more diffused look. So there's the application of our free play lightener uh, from Joico. So pretty cool, very, very consistent uh, feel to that color. This is the end result. I just pre-lightened it to get it up to the level that I wanted to work with. So I think a lot of people push hair a little bit too far. You don't need to, you can create more damage that way. I wanted to lift this up. Also, a mannequin is a very processed hair and it's colored. So um, when we talk about color correction, all those different things, a mannequin is actually great practice because of the fact that it's very difficult to lift a mannequin to a platinum white blonde. So we lift it up, pulls those orange tones through. We're living at about a level eight right now. So I wanna go in there and I wanna utilize that level eight, but I wanna neutralize it a bit, make it a little more natural. So we're gonna start off with 9NV. This is a natural violet light blonde uh, this is Joico Lumashine they sent me all these products very fun to play with then I mix it with 7 NV to create that level 8 that's really what I'm going for um, to keep it at that level 8 that target level and that also has a natural violet medium blonde so what this is gonna do I want to talk about tones because I'm using a violet base a natural violet so I'm assuming it has a little bit of brown and violet tone to it, no blue, and we're working with orange hair. So what I'm gonna do is it's still gonna have a warm richness to it, maybe like a chestnut feel, but it's not, so it's not gonna completely neutralize the hair, but it is gonna go in and soften the warmth and keep a little bit of brightness in there. So you don't always have to counteract every bit of it. Like I don't have to use a blue base every time I see orange hair, um, but you wanna accent that natural tone. The other uh, color mixture that I put together, you guys saw it, I'm a little bit behind in this voiceover, but it's the 5NV. Uh, it's an ounce of that, which is the natural violet as well. But then I added the 5BA. This is where I add in the blue base, the blue ash. Um, and the reason I'm adding the blue ash is because of the orange tones and I really want to have depth in it. So I want to have depth in the underneath. I want to have depth in the roots. So I really want to counteract that orange warmth. Nobody wants orange roots if that's not the what they're going for. So I add that depth in there and then I'll pull that brighter tone through the ends. And that's gonna be our technique today. So you could see there is that deep kind of rich orange look to the base where we feathered the technique. So if I use this blue base uh, color, it's gonna allow me to um, neutralize that, deepen it, and then soften and pull that chestnut kind of tone through the ends. And we're gonna work this through. It's gonna be very similar throughout the entire head. Um, I want that consistency. I want the natural rooted look. So um, this is a very easy technique to do in the salon. You pre-lighten them very quickly. Um, get them to the level that you want. Don't go beyond the level if you don't need to and then go in and create the tones that you're looking for. So what you'll notice about the color melting process is that I paint the dark root on first, then I go straight through to the ends. Some people do the whole base first, then they paint the ends. Um, th in this particular section in the very front, I like to keep it nice and organized and just do section by section the entire thing through. I also like to melt those colors together. So you'll see me kind of smashing the base color into the end to create almost like a, a little shadow mid shaft bit and then pull the light color all the way through at the very end. So I think taking it section by section is easier for me, but you guys can make that decision on your own uh, when you go to do it. You'll also notice that you see the warmth now, but as this color processes through, it'll start to, um, you'll start to see the tones really happening. So again, that dark base, level five. So I went one shade darker than they would naturally live. Um, that really 
for me, that's how you can really control tone. So like, let's say we wanted to control this, this level eight. We go a little more towards a level seven and use our color, that's gonna control it better than trying to counteract it at the exact level that it's at. So adding that depth in and then pulling that light through. Now in the back, I'm gonna do a quicker technique to, which is, because the hair is a little bit shorter, I'm gonna go through, do all the base, and then I'll do the ends at the very end. So just switching it up a little bit. We talked about there's different options. This is the other way to do it. I'm taking vertical sections, painting the base on. Um, the reason I'm taking vertical sections is that allows me to control how deep I'm going with that root a little bit better. Uh, when I went horizontal before in the past, it just seems like uh, because the hair is shorter, it was a little harder to control that. So I go vertical. I'm gonna go vertical all the way through the back and then we'll paint the ends. Another key trick, I, I didn't talk about it when I was mixing the color in the video, but I added a piece of foil to the lighter color on the bowl. So uh, just so that it would allow me to know which bowl, as they process, sometimes they look very similar, especially if you're working with the same tones at different levels. So I'll put a piece of foil, this is a very standard thing, but if you didn't know that trick, um, there you go, you might be in school watching this. Um, just add a piece of foil to your bowl so you can keep them separated. So now I'm gonna go through, paint the end color. This is again the 9NV uh, with the 7NV equal parts, so it's creating pretty much a level eight. Um, and toning out that really, really bright yellow brassiness and keeping some of the chestnut warmth. It may look repetitive in the amount of times I'm working that hair, especially when it's sped up, you can kind of see how it just keep working it back and forth. But the worst thing is when you don't put in that effort and then at the end you start seeing spots that you really wish you would have put a little more coverage on. So really just make sure that you're thorough uh, with coloring hair. Thing I like about coloring hair that's totally different because I'm obviously uh, more of a hair cutter. If you, if you follow these videos, I cut hair uh, way more often than I color it on videos. But um, the thing I like about color is the freedom that you have um, to really just kind of paint and create this more organic feel and really bring a haircut to life. So um, I'm basing all, every color that I do, I'm basing it off of what I want the cut to look like, which is sometimes the opposite uh, thought process in other people. So now I'm combing through, don't comb too high, but I wanna comb the ends just to make sure I'm fully saturated. And then I go in with the heat set from Joyco. This is a blowout perfecting cream. Um, the cool thing about this uh, product is it's a heat protectant. I really just wanted something with a really light hold. I'm also gonna iron the finished look with a, a vibrostrate iron. So I just wanted to make sure that I had um, the protection in there. So this is the end result. You can see the deep base that we have and the chestnut ends. Um, pretty, I love the results I got with this hair color. This is the first time I've used these tones and I really like the result. So I hope you guys like it. Hope you can utilize this in the salon. Let me know in the comments below and tag me on Instagram at Free Salon Education with the results that you get uh, when doing this technique on your clients. I would love to see that. So tag Free Salon Education on there. Also get 20% off on freesaloneducation.com's online store if you use the code MattBeckVlog at checkout. Uh, you can get 20% off almost everything. And we have a free partnership program where we do live classes every month. So check that out on our website as well. And if you like this technique and you're not a hairdresser, find a salon at hairsalonlocator.com. That is our website uh, where we have all the salons that follow what we do online uh, on that website. So check it out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks.